Okay, I'm going to do a calculus problem. Uh, this is page 93, number 4. I mentioned to a few of you in class that this would be a good one to do before the test. I meant to do this earlier in the weekend, but um, I just found my note to try to do this. So hopefully some of you get to watch this before the test tomorrow. Page 93, number 4. Um, really, part A, B, and C are pre-calc problems, but I'll, uh, I'll do those real quick. It says uh, there's a point three four, and it's on a circle. The circle x squared plus y squared equals twenty five. That is the circle origin zero zero, radius five. Um, I'm just going to be real rough here on this. That would be five. That's five. So three four is on the circle. It shouldn't be too surprising because if you were to go over three and up four you make a little right triangle and that's a three four five triangle so uh, in a similar way we know four threes on the circle we know negative three fours on the circle we know negative four negative three and all any combination of three and four whether it's positive or negative will be on the circle okay so they say what's the slope of the line joining p and uh... the center zero so p was here And what is the slope from 0, 0 to 3, 4? Well, it's just the slope question, really. 4 minus 0 over 3 minus 0. Sorry for this handwriting. It's, of course, 4 thirds. Not much there. Uh, B says find the equation of the tangent line. Okay, I'm going to go to a new page for that. B. Find the equation of the tangent line passing through the point P. So I'm just doing a real rough sketch here. Three, four. Hey, I didn't even notice there's a picture in the book of this, if you want to see it better than mine, right above number four. Uh, the tangent line, there's the point zero. Tangent line is going to pass like this. Of course, it should actually touch the line. And you might recall that it's perpendicular. That's the key thing. So. Um, the slope of the tangent is going to be um, the negative reciprocal of our slope, which was 4 thirds, right? So this will be negative 3 fourths will be our slope there. Um, we know it goes to the point 3, 4, so we can use point slope. And bear with me with some algebra. Um, plus nine fourths. I did not work this out in advance, so if I make a mistake here, let me know. Raise your hand. Whatever it takes. That's common denominator there, right? Sixteen fourths. So the answer looks like it's going to be negative three fourths x plus 25 fourths that's part b um, now it's interesting what, where we're heading here is that circles are easy to work with there's simple properties about circles we can work with circles no problem but later on in calculus we're going to get to places where we're dealing with curves that don't have these really nice properties that circles have um, but we can do this. We can find the equation of a tangent line, which is algebra, if it's tangent to a circle. Okay, go on to part C. Part C gets a little more abstract. It says, let's say there's another point on the circle, a Q. And actually, if you look in the book, they put a nice Q on there for you. They put it around here. And its coordinates are X, Y. And of course, P, the coordinates are still... 3, 4. Right? We want to find the slope between um, the joins P and Q. So this would be a secant line. It should go through the circle. Part of the, the line is on the interior of the circle, if I could draw well on this thing. So the slope of PQ, you say, well, that's easy. 
it's difference in y's over difference in x's. But if you read part C carefully, it says to put the slope in terms of x. So that means y is off limits. We cannot use y. So we need to replace y with something. Well, is there some equation we can think of that, that relates x and y? Hopefully you thought of the circle equation that we mentioned earlier. x squared plus y squared equals uh, 25. So if you know what y is, first of all, x, y squared is 25 minus that, and y would be plus or minus this. In fact, if you forget the plus or minus and you graph it, you're going to see just the upper half of the semicircle. If, say, for some reason you square root it and you forgot the plus of the plus minus, you only did the minus, you'd see the lower half. But you need both. The upper and the lower half together make a circle. So if you were to graph this in your calculator, you'd use this equation, but you'd have to use two lines. Y1 would be positive or negative, I suppose, and Y2 would be the other one, either positive or negative. So we'll take that information and we'll plug it in here. So let's go back to our color. So it's now going to be a real messy, and by the way, uh, it's plus or minus. Since I am here, the first quadrant, I'm just going to use the plus. And that will make our life easier. So I'm replacing y with what the circle equation says y is. And that's as good as we can get. That is a slope in terms of x. Finally, part D. Part D says calculate the limit of this slope that we just did in terms of x as x approaches 3. What makes this interesting, which frequently happens with limit problems, is if you were to try to directly substitute 3, you would get a 0 in the denominator. So, what do we do? Do we go to our calculator? No. We're not going to do that. We're going to try to algebraically find this limit. We can't do direct substitution. So hopefully you're thinking through the three options. Is it simplifying the complex fraction and reducing? No. Is it uh, factoring and reducing? Actually, you can factor in that square root, but it wouldn't do any good. No, it's the third one. It's rationalize the numerator. You take this big, messy mess. Uh, big, messy mess. If I can... There we go. And you write, you multiply top and bottom by that. Yeah, sorry about the handwriting. Okay, so what do we end up with? Well, the numerator, as frequently happens, is thrilled with this, with this idea because uh, you are multiplying binomials. Oh, whoops, there should be pluses. Sorry about that. You probably were wondering, what was I doing? <laughs> Sorry, hopefully you didn't pause and ponder. Uh, those have to be conjugates. Since they're conjugates, the oi will cancel. First times first, the radicals go away. Last times last. It's just negative 16. The oys will be the same. One is plus, one is minus. They'll cancel. The denominator, you might be frightened of what's coming up. You don't need to multiply these. What's going to happen every time? This x minus 3 is going to cancel. That's our problem. That's why we can't do direct substitution, because of the x minus 3. It's going to cancel. These all have happy endings. So I'm anticipating my numerator will be x minus 3. Let's see. Uh, it's going to be 9 minus x squared. Uh-oh. Not x minus 3. Okay, forgive my handwriting. Um, it's not it. But the numerator is something that looks familiar. I can actually factor the numerator. And I'm going to run out of space on this one. The numerator can be written as 3 minus x and 3 plus x. Um, close. These are close. Not quite the same though, right? Um, these two. 
What can you do? Well, you might recall that if you want to switch the order of a binomial with a minus in between, you know, a minus b, you want to write it b minus a, you can do that. You just have to factor a negative out. Check it out. It becomes negative b plus a, which is the same thing as this. So I'm going to do that up top on the next page. Okay, now I've gone to the next page. I do not have um, in front of me what I had, so hopefully I do not make a mistake. Um, I'm going to factor that negative out and make it negative x minus 3. I still have the x plus 3. Multiply that through, see if you don't get the same thing. It's the same. But now it looks the same. I can actually cancel those. Still have this mess, but we're not afraid of it. It won't hurt us. Now we can actually do direct substitution. Let's do it so as you do direct substitution, you stop writing the limit. It becomes, don't forget the negative, negative 3 plus 3 up top over down below. I don't really need the parentheses. 25 minus 3 squared plus 4. It's going to be negative 6 over, uh, let's see, that's 25 minus 9, this is square root of 16, plus 4, that's going to be, what, it's negative 6 over 8, 4 plus 4, which is negative 3 fourths. Okay, let's think about this for a second. What, what did we just do? We probably forgot what we were doing here. Um, we were calculating the limit. Let's go back to this different color. Oops. We were calculating the limit as x approaches 3 of that slope in terms of x. Yes. So the slope in terms of x was that slope of um, it was a slope of this secant line going like this. And recall on part, uh, what part was it? Part B, we found the slope of that line was exactly negative 3 fourths, the negative reciprocal of negative 4 thirds. Well, here with a really complicated calculus, we got the same answer. So why would we ever want to do this? Again, because most problems aren't as easy as a circle. If it was, we'd do the algebra. We're not going to do this again. But this is just confirmation that the calculus seems to be doing something correct. It seems to be working. Um, and this will be this will be where chapter two is heading. So this is a little bit of a preview of chapter two, but I thought what was helpful was the uh, limit on part D, uh, another rationalization example that actually turned into a factoring example as well. Uh, so you had to do both of those. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, have a good night. And see you next time. Or a good day whenever you watch this. Or a good morning. Made with DoodleCast Pro.